Hey, what you doing over there, boy? I asked you a question. Where do you think you're going, huh? What you got in that box? Huh? What's in the box? Put it down. Huh? Huh? Come here. Dexter for, asshole. What? You heard me. You never kill nobody, mister. Come on, mister. Lie to yourself. Now sit your little narrow ass down. It's my friend, Dexter. Crazy, man. That's a chicken. Birds can't be nobody's friend. Kill him, baby, fuck it. And you kill him? Hold him. Go on, I ain't playing with you, boy. What's this? I plucked it. Boy, if you don't know how to pluck a chicken, then why the hell you kill it? Maybe some old lady like eating chicken and want to bite. Why you kill this chicken? Because I hate it. That's why I always crying like some sick old man. You live around here? Over on Hooper. Well, you can't hear no rooster from over there. Well, get back over there and pluck all the feathers out. When you finish, cut him open with that knife on the sink there. And make sure you rinse out all the blood. All of it. What's your name, boy? Daryl. You finna do something with that knife, Daryl? <laughs> We'll make some uh, fresh green beans, some dirty rice, some stewed chicken on the hot plate over here. We gotta cook them one at a time, but we gonna have us a good breakfast. Go on, clean up them feathers over there. You hungry? Hell yeah. Good. That's real good. Boy, should be hungry. Fuck, that's supposed to mean. It means something's missing and hungry tells you what it is. That's some kind of friend to you? Hungry your friend too? Yeah. Hungry, horny, how come? They all my friends. My best friends. Man got to have good friends to make it through the penitentiary. My daddy's up in the city jail. At least he was. Died though.
What's going on ladies and gents in Cyberland? Coming back to another uh, film review. This time we're moving on to a film that I saw on HBO long, long time ago. Long time ago. And for my age when I did see it, I think it came out, what? Yeah, 98. For that time period, it really connected with me because um, Walter Mosley is a great writer and that, I think that's really what it was, so. Always outnumbered, always outgunned. So with this film, we find Lawrence Fishburne as a former inmate, finally got out of prison after doing probably a huge stint for rape and murder. And he doesn't have a job, but somehow he's, he's surviving in L.A. and he pretty much has a place to live, but he just picks up. hands and balls and stuff and turns them in for money. That's pretty much what we're looking at here. Um, and then he works with another guy. Um, and the film is just him trying to make his way through L.A. and having a record and trying to survive. He's not going around killing people. He's very intelligent, very aware of his surroundings and, and how to handle and conduct himself accordingly as a black man, a former, uh, as a black man, but not only that, but former in inmate and we see how he interacts with people in the in his city um, how he interacts with women how he conducts himself with women after what he's done in the past and then coming across this boy named Daryl trying to um, seeing things in the boy and trying to make sure he doesn't fall down to a path of um, getting killed or being or or falling into the criminal element, even though he kind of, uh, wrong place, wrong time kind of thing for him with some, with, in regards to a criminal in, uh, situation. And we see him interact with the late uh, Bill Nunn, you know, and what I got from this film was, it was a situation of It wasn't an action. It wasn't really crime. It was just drama and, and just how he... Just trying to... Really just trying to survive. What I got from him was just a man just trying to survive. He's not trying to get get paid and get money. He's just trying to take one day at a time and survive. And he keeps having these situations thrown at him to where... Is it a test from Yah? To where should he do the right thing or, or be more worldly as opposed to being godly. Yeah, you know, he comes across this woman who's married to one of his friends, but they're having marriage or problem and it's like he kinda has to let the husband know, like, look man, you gotta do better because you know, you know, you got a diamond in the rough kind of thing, you know. There's that and then there's dealing with Daryl and, and how what's happened with him and trying to help him. And then there's him trying to keep a roof over his head because he's a former inmate. And then coming across Nat, uh, the uh, Natalie Natalie Cole, um, who is a good woman who has her own business, and she likes uh, Socrates. That's Lawrence Fishburne's name, and, and he likes her, but it's like he does, you know, he doesn't want to come out and say, it, but he's really attracted to her, and you could see that tension. And finally, you know, later in the film, he explains why he didn't do it. He didn't make a move, and it makes sense for, for him. Um, and the film overall was just a... Um, it had a lot of good merits. It had a lot of good um, wisdom points for me. And I think that's why I still enjoy it to this day. Unfortunately, it's hard to come across... I, it's hard to come across buying it without having to stream it or, you know, rent it kind of thing. I, you know, it's hard to find a physical copy of it, you know. And that's just the way it is. But I have one. I have what I can for, for watching it. And I watch it from time to time. It's a really good film. Um, and then the, the, the cast members you have in it, they've, they've all done a lot of great films. So it's not like it's just, 
any old body that's in the film. That's the other thing I got from it. If you like Devil in a Blue Dress from Walter Mosley, then you'll like this film. Because this is, you know, 90s, 2000s. So it has that environment. But it's, it's not like... It, it's just, you, you know... If you watch Devil in a Blue Dress, you'll get what I'm saying about the mannerisms and the way people carry themselves in regards to this film. Since it's, they're both uh, written by Walter Mosley, who's a great writer. I just hope at some point uh, his his stories on Easy Rollins finally ends up being a show or something. I really think with what Amazon Prime did with Reacher, they could do the same thing with, with Easy and have it on there, and it'd be, it would be great. But, you know, we'll, we'll see with that. My rating for the film is a 9 out of 10 yes sirs. Um, I think maybe... Maybe the ending, if the ending didn't wait, didn't end the way it did, maybe I'd probably give it a better rating. It just felt so... I don't know, anticlimactic to me, if that's the right word. It just felt somber, really sad. Um, I felt maybe if they... It didn't have to end on a happy note, but maybe it could have just been subtle to where... Things are looking up for Socrates to some degree. It doesn't have to be happy, but you know he's he's still making it. But the way it ends, it's like it, he doesn't die, but the scene just is really, really somber and really sad. So and I think that's why I don't give it a ten because after all the shit he's been through throughout the whole film, you would think they would get a little bit of um, some type of. Uh, break, but I guess that's what, that wasn't what they were trying to really go for with this film. So with that being said, I will catch you guys on the next one.